the next lesson we are going to talk about correlation and regression which is part from mkf to one to one as well and i believe that you have touched correlation briefly or in fact extensively from business statistics as well so it's going to be the same right in any statistics because this is going to be borrowed from statistic literature as well it's going to be the same exactly what you have learned okay so what is correlation oh well so in terms of correlation you might remember a scatter plot between let's say an x and a y okay so just say x is a variable y is another variable and you probably remember some sort of scatter plot something like that all right some messy scatter plot that looks like that right okay there you go all right so a scatter plot that looks something like that where you can see the physical direction of that whether it's going up or going down or so on okay now first of all in fact the data will divide that into two normally all right so the first one it will be an independent variable and next one will be dependent now if you're looking at this in, uh, in here is that your y which is your dependent all right is affected by a series of your independent variables right so you can have more than one independent variable so it could be like for example x1 x2 all right that affects y all right but all of these should affects y okay so that's what we call a independent variable and dependent variable okay so dependent variable are values that are affected by independent variable and independent variables are natural phenomena all right that that will influence your dependent okay so give you an example of this okay so for example what is the relationship between attending david's class and your mkf 2131 mark okay I'll give you a minute as well to think about which of the direction is this. The second one, delivery time and distance, exam scores, hours of study, value of car, age of car. Okay. Give you a minute to sort of go through this and pick which is which. Okay, welcome back to uh, after the exercise. So I hope you have the answers for everything. All right, so as we can see, between attending David's class and MKF 2131. Now, as you can see here, that if you attend more, well, hopefully your mark should be increased. So this, I'll say that this should be Y and this should be X, all right? Now, second one is that the delivery time and distance, all right? So, obviously, when you have more distance or actually further, the further the distance you are, then obviously the further the delivery time. So, I would say that the distance will be my X and delivery time is Y, all right? Because distance will affect your delivery time. I'll write that properly. Okay. Between exam score and the hours of study. All right. So if you study more, then hopefully it will make your exam score looks better. All right. Not necessarily is, but you know, 
that's what we can do, right? Study harder. What? And lastly, the value of car and the age of car. So obviously, the age of car will determine your value of car. That's your x, and that's your y again. Okay. Great. Okay. So now we have that. Okay. And now, after you determine what's your x and what's your y, you then can construct a re mathematical relationship, or which is regression. Now, correlation. Correlation is ranging from negative 1 to 1. All right. So let's come back to a scatter plot again. Let's say we're going to pick up one example from here. Let's say age of car and values of car. All right. Age of cars. All right. And values of car. Okay. So <clears throat> the age of car. Okay. Just want to make sure that we are not in. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. So age of car and value of car. As you can see that you might have something along that line. Okay. All right. Okay. Looks. For example, looks something like that. Okay. No. And then from here, what we can do is you can determine what is the correlation. Now, the correlation here, all right, there are two parts that are in here. The first one is about the sign, which tells you about the relationship. Okay, Negative numbers will implies negative relationship. Positive number implies a positive relationship. So negative relationship will look something like that. It's going, going down. So this is negative. And a positive relationship will look something like that. That is positive. Okay. So as it goes up, that is positive relationship. All right. Now, positive relationship means that if something increases, the other thing is also increases. And negative is something decreases, uh, something increases, the other thing decreases. So it's an inverse relationship where positive is a direct relationship. So it's a proportion. And negative is an inverse proportion. So first of all, it's the sign, and the second one is the number. So the number implies the relative strength. So obviously, as the number goes to 1, then the stronger the relationship is. So I'm going to give you a, a example again. I'll give you about 2 minutes, less than that probably. Give you 30 seconds actually. To understand this, consider two correlation coefficients. Relationship between y and x is r is equal to 0 0.6, the correlation is 0 0.6, and the other one is y and z. So, three questions. So, first question is which one have a positive relationship, which one has a negative relationship, which one possesses a stronger relationship? I'll give you 30 seconds. All right, as we can see here, all right, so let's recap. The sign will tell you about the relationship. So in this case, the sign here, y and x is a positive sign. So therefore, y and x, oh, give me a break, all right. Okay, so y and x, it's a positive relationship and y and z is the negative relationship 
Okay, I have to use it very delicate when writing. Okay, now the third question, which a lot of people fall trapped into. Which one possesses a stronger relationship? Now, as we can see here, the number implies the strength of relationship. So the, just the number without the negative or positive. So as the number increases to one, the stronger the relationship is. All right. So when we discard the negative and the positive, and when we look at them, which one has a higher number? Well, regard, if we disregard the positive and negative, obviously we can see that relationship between Y and Z are stronger, all right? Because they are at 0 0.8, all right? Although it's negative, but the negative is just telling me it is a negative relationship. So to answer this question, which one possesses a stronger relationship? It will be Y and Z, okay? So in other words, what I'm going to say is that a relationship of positive one will be having the same strength i repeat a relationship which have a positive one will have the same strength as a correlation that has a negative one in it all right but just the difference if it is a positive one all right and look something like that a negative one will look like that but it possesses the same strength of relationship. Okay, so I'm going to just give, to give you a brief idea of what a strong relationship will look like and a weak relationship will look like. So normally in a rule of thumb, when you can see a general pattern into it, that is a strong relationship. All right, so you can see from here, the general pattern looks very clear. It's going up and it doesn't bounce around too much, all right? Where in this case, it looks still going up, but it still bounces, all right? So you still can look, that means that it's still looking a positive relationship, but it's not as gonna be strong as this one, because this one, it, the more it can, can be contained, the better it is. And if you have a perfect relationship, which means that the line is exactly plotting whatever that the point is, all right? So the line will be fall, falling exactly where the plot of the dotted line is. The same thing with negative relationship, right? It's going down, right? This, but it's still the same strength, right? So if you have something that is more contained, it's much stronger as something that is broader apart. And as we say, the perfect relationship will be exactly on the line. Something like that. Now, in this, in correlation, we are not measuring a curvy relationship. So please do cross that out as well. And if you look something like this, where you really can't determine what's the relationship, then we can simply say that there is no relationship. All right. So this is, there is no relationship. So your R in this case will be close to zero. In this, we are not really measuring. So don't bother about that. Don't bother. About that. I really want to say that I really want to go through an example to really iterate what's going on between correlation and regression. Okay, now in here, I have marketing analytics marks in session one, 2002 from a university. I do not want to tell you which university is this. Okay, so it looks pretty standard. Okay, going up, all right, great. Very simple, okay. Now, what we can say, all right, so in this case, we want to determine what is my exam mark because this exam mark is Y, right? So Y is your dependent variable, all right? And this is your X, which is your tutorial mark, all right? So in this case, what we want to know is your X, whether X is influencing Y, okay? So in this case, it's the tutorial mark and exam. So in other words, where the tutorial mark will actually contribute it to your exam mark. So just looking at the general graph, right? It looks like there is a positive relationship, right? It looks upward, okay? And it looks pretty strong because it looks something like very contained, as you can see. 
that this is where the line is, right? So I can see that the the relationship is going up, all right? But that's all that I can tell. I can tell that it's going up. So if going up means that my correlation I'm expecting is supposed to be a positive, all right? It's a positive number and it's going to be relatively strong, all right? How strong? I don't know. All right, we have to look at uh, different... Uh, we have to look at the data actually yes so as what I can say that from the graph we can infer that tutorial and exam marks are positively correlated that means that they are upward sloping yes I agree with that so we can use the correlation test yes okay but correlation is just limited to relative strength of the relationship okay so so yeah, so I mean correlation is there. Okay, we can say that okay, that's high correlation, but that's the end of correlation. That's it. What what happened if you really want to explore further? Like what what do you have to do if we want to explore further? Okay, now when we want to explore further, we can use regression. Okay, so regression. Okay, this is very important. Regression. It's just a line of best fit, okay? Now, I don't know whether you learned this in physics before or if you have done experiment and it's like, okay, plot your line of best fit, okay? So what does it mean by a line of best fit? Okay. So let's say if you have an experiment that looks like this. Okay, I'm just making that line. Okay, something like that. And I really want to plot a line of best fit, okay? So line of best fit is a line that sort of satisfies every single point here, such that the error or the distance from here to the point are minimal, I repeat, such that the distance from the line to the point are minimal. Okay. Now, so... In this case, a regression line, which is what I just put up here, this is an example of regression line, is what we call a prediction. So repeat, I repeat, a regression line, I'm sorry, regression line okay, so a regression line is actually a line of prediction okay so it's like it's like a, a having a crystal ball and trying to predict whether whether it's correct or strong right so now as it is a prediction you will never get it you never get it right most of the time in fact all the time sometimes you don't get it right but what we want is to build a model that minimizes the error or the or the or the misrepresentation. Okay, but thankfully with the current technology, all right, so you don't really have to use your ruler to point out where is the exact best line, all right. So that's not your job. That's your computer's job to do. Your job here is to interpret the outputs, all right which we are going to talk about in lecture uh, in tutorial sorry so in lectures i'm going to give you all the theory in tutorial we'll give you we'll, we'll dive through step by step on how to actually get this result okay so after we got the result we can see that exam is equals to 14.047 plus 0.7163 tutorial okay and you got r square and so on that you can recap what is that okay so david me okay i was previous student in 2013 all right so i'm not that old all right so i still uh, I, I i graduated i graduated from uni this uh this year so still pretty you know still pretty alert okay so previous student of this course in 2013 for example okay my, my tutorial marks for the course is 85.83%, okay? Not a, not a bad result, all right? So certainly there's people doing better than me, that's fine. But 
you can see that my tutorial marks in this course is 85.83. Now, we have a regression equation right here. Okay, that we got from the previous, uh, we got from the previous model. Now, how do we predict David Smart? How do we predict David Smart? So using these numbers and this. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to think about it and how would you do it. well i hope you guys get it right okay so the way how you predict yours your mark or david mark sorry is to be able to insert 85.83 into the regression model okay and we see that the prediction here is 75.53 so what does it mean All right so which means that we are predicting david's mark in the exam to get 75.53%, okay? But do you think that that will, uh, that will be correct, right? So as I said, that's just a prediction mark, right? So this is a prediction mark. Remember that, that's just prediction. But in actual, anything can goes well or goes wrong. Now, thankfully, in this case, I got better. All right, I got 92%, all right? So... Obviously, there's an error in here of 92 minus 75.53, which is 16.47. Okay, now we are not going to talk about errors that much, all right? But what we are going to say, uh, the point that you need to take into account when you are making a regression is that the calculations that you did is all just based on prediction, okay? Because regression is prediction. The actual, we don't know, all right, until people have done it, all right? So if we don't have incoming data, which means that we don't know, okay? Until we have the data sorted out, then yes, we know what's the actual, and then we can see the error. But most likely, right, it will be deviated a lot, right? It, I mean, very hardly you will get exactly the same, right? So it will be, it will, it will be most likely, it will be tangent off, uh, to the upward side or the downward side. Okay, so that's what I want you to, to get uh, into your head that regression is a line of prediction. Okay, as you can see in here as well, we are looking at the regression function. So this is the regression function. Now in the regression function, we can see that our y okay let me just erase this our y has to be with the hat sign as you can see all right so that's y with the hat why is it hat it signifies that this is a prediction okay what do i mean by that okay so for example just now i said that david's predicted exam is 75 so we can put we can put here well let me just erase that exam hat is equals to 75 okay but the exam is equals to 92 so what does it mean exam hat which is the prediction so the prediction is 75 so that's the prediction marks exam is equals to 92 that means that that is the actual marks that i got so this is actual oh yes Okay, so this is actual and this is predicted. Oof, my bad. Okay. Okay, so this is actual and this is predicted. 